Hey everyone, uh, I welcome you once again on my channel Coaching with Arun Tukral and I'm sure and I believe you would have watched the first episode of the 20 unrecognizable habits stated by none other than Master Marshall Goldsmith. So what we are going to do today in the, in the last episode we covered the 10 very important and relevant habits but these are 20 habits so in this episode I am going to cover the rest of the 10 habits which are unrecognizable. No doubt we are talking about this video for those people who are highly successful but at the same time if they want to become more successful they really need to look deeper into some of the habits which they are practicing it unknowingly by stopping certain behaviors they will be able to do better in their role in their in and they can have more success so let's get into those typical uh, habits that unrecognizable habits or behaviors that we exhibit and understand in more detail so let's talk about the next habit that comes that is the 11th one claiming credit when we don't deserve <laughs> as i said even the line itself suggests that you know there are leaders who tend to take the credit of the work which they haven't done which means this becomes one of the most annoying way to overestimate our contributions to any success something that you have not done something that you have not been part of and you claim success to so if i have to explain it in a very simple word if it is someone's resume someone's achievements which are documented nobody can copy it nobody can claim it but then there are situations that there is a customer which has been converted or there is a meeting where people contributed with certain points. Now it's very difficult to differentiate that who said what and whether the leader is going to take the credit of all the core work whereas the main points or the core work was done by someone else. Now if this happens what really brings in mind is that the leader is actually demotivating and betraying their teammates and it is somewhere reflecting the habit number one that is the winning too much habit that means the leader wants to win in any case so by doing this you are demoralizing your teammate one you are depriving him of the due recognition that person deserves and number two you are trying to prove that you know it's you who has done everything whereas you are not instrumental in it so that's a very dangerous habit if you claim the credit when you don't deserve so uh, if you have to also understand it i can put it like this think about it and take it on your own something that you have done yourself and your boss does this how will you feel the same feelings happen when you do the same thing when you take the credit in front of or in the back of your juniors or your teammates so this one habit you really need to work on the next habit which is again to ponder deep into is called making excuses which means the need to repositions our annoying behavior as a permanent fixture so people excuse us for it i'm sure you would have heard many people talking about various kinds of excuses you know i got late because there was a big traffic jam or people say that because my secretary did not prepare the reports on time i could not reach on time to the meeting or i am very short tempered i am and i'm like this you know my i've been told by everyone around me that i am a i'm a go getter so which means i will go out and do anything to achieve my goals even if i have to overcome or come across people and i can rub people around now when people say these kind of statements what are they basically saying is they are making excuses and when you are making excuses you are invariably blaming someone else or you are taking on yourself as a behavior which is an unexcusable point so let me give you an example there are two kinds of excuses people make one is called as very direct and the second is a very subtle one when it comes to direct and upfront excuse it simply refers that you are blaming someone so you must have heard people saying that you know it is not me who did this it is because someone made a mistake in my report and due to which uh, this report became flawed or somebody say that you know it is because of the traffic jam I could not reach on time or it is because that the secretary made a mistake I was not able to come fully prepare and I missed certain files 
So what you are doing is you are blaming someone else. While on the other side, the subtle way of saying is, you know, I'm I'm typically a short tempered guy. You know, I'm very poor in time management. No matter I'm successful, but this is the way I am. So in other words, that is an unexcusable behavior and you are just taking it as a point that you are a typically person like this and you cannot change. So everyone has to accept that and make changes according to you, according to your style. Now this is something which is not right. So something is not right even if you are a leader, you may say and claim, but people understand that very well and they do not respect you for that. So think about it where you are making those excuses, when you are making those excuses and in front of whom you are making excuses. Because if you have this habit of making excuses very often, you will see that people will not take you seriously. They will say that the that you are a person who puts blames on others and you do not want to change this behavior. The 13th habit is that clinging to the past, which means the need to deflect blame away from ourselves and onto events and people from our past, which is a subset of blaming everyone else. So I've heard a lot of people, they are talking, you know, and they are they are saying a language of that how they have become a victim of various situations. They say that they could not go to a good school, college or get the best of educations because their parents could not afford it. When they come to job, they say that, you know, unfortunately, started a, uh, they started their job in a company which was not very big or it was too big for them to do something because they did not allow them to do. You will hear in and out these people are always talking the language of being a victim and when it says victim, they are the one who are blaming everyone else and they are always talking about the past. But think about it, if you want to be an aspiring leader, a great leader, past is already gone. You cannot change a single bit of it. What you have to look up to is the future what you can do now and what you can do today that will secure your future in making things better for yourself. But if you continue to refer your past and talk about your victim story, people would not be interested. They don't want to come closer to you because then you are a person with negative attitude. You are a person who is actually blaming everyone. And that attitude is not a reflective, a good attitude for a person who really wants to aspire to move higher up in the ladder. Then comes playing favorites, which means failing to see that we are treating someone unfairly. You like it or not that you will find that, you know, in the organizations, people have favoritism. You know, they will like certain people based on how much they are showing agreement to whatever that leader says. Because there are very few people who have the courage to disagree and bring a difference of opinion in the meeting, which is very important. But when you join an organization, most of the time you will see the senior leadership and the HR teams, they talk about that we encourage people to uh, share what they think, they can challenge the system, they can bring new ideas to bring processes. And you know, when it comes to the real occasion during the meetings or open town hall uh, sessions, nobody dares to do that. And most of the people say yes to. And when people say yes to, you will find then these people become the favorites of the leader. If that is the case, you are actually making two mistakes. One, you are encouraging people who are not competent and who are not bringing value on the table, which means this organization is heading towards lack of innovation, lack of creativity and lack of problem solving because these people will say yes to you in every occasion. And the second uh, wrong thing which is happening by doing is by doing this way is you are demeaning and you are depriving people who have the capability to bring change in the organization, you're depriving them to give them an opportunity to speak out and bring a valuable change in the organization. So you are doing two wrong things at the same time when you play favoritism and that's what you need to discourage. So what to do in this situation? Very simple. You need to first look at it that which are those people in your organization 
who are whom you like when i say you like it is not about their 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 uh, their looks but their personality number 2 how much they are contributing to the success of the organization or with respect to business and third which is very important is that how much value they are adding to their team how much they are bringing on the table when it comes to value addition some new ideas innovation bringing change these are the people you should be closer to uh, these are the people that you should be closer and invariably you may show and reflect favoritism on this side but having said that if you have only yes man around you it is not going to work it is actually going to be a devastating step as a leader moving into the 15th habit which is refusing to express regret in other words it is the inability to take responsibility for our actions admit that we, and admit that we are wrong or recognize how our actions affect others in simple word you know it's very very hard it's very very difficult for lot and lot of leaders to accept and say sorry or accept that they were wrong which is a very difficult thing to take place in in, in the in the in the state of mind of a leader so what exactly you have to do if you really believe an attitude of gratitude if you really want to win over your teammates and show so if if you are wrong admit that you are wrong apologize if you have not been able to do certain things as you thought but if you continue to say that you know whatever the situation is whatever i say is right and that's the way it is my way is highway it's not going to work because people know this very well that this leader is not adaptable he or she is not flexible and when they see this lack of flexibility they just can't accept you as a leader so think about it in more detail that where in your work area you are invariably practicing these skills or uh, these behaviors or these habits and where you really need to work on the 16th habit is not listening which is the most passive aggressive form of disrespect for colleagues i am very vocal about in terms of communication skills for most of the leader and listening skills or not listening is one of the major reason of lack of communication lack of trust lack of respect when people are not listening after all what you have to do you have to just open your ears and open your eyes and just shut your mouth and listen but this is the most simplest thing people cannot do and what you do when you are not listening you are telling the other person i don't respect you i don't like you i don't understand you you are stupid and you have no value in my life or all of the above what i said now if you are reflecting a attitude like this it simply means that you are not interested in listening to others and generally if you ask me listening is an invisible and a silent activity because you are doing it inside of you and you are saying all this it only become visible when you become impatient when somebody is speaking and you are just scratching your head and you are just want to run away from that place is a sign that you are not listening so if you are one of those who is a um, poor listener that means you are not going to get success as a great leader watch this behavior very carefully let's move to the next one that is failing to express gratitude i think this is the most basic form of bad manners you see that you come across so many people in your life who come and who wants who gives suggestions who gives you ideas who educate you who compliments you and the most simplest thing that people can do is to say thank you and a lot of people don't even say that if you really want to disarm somebody who is annoyed or who is not pally with you the best way is whenever they speak they give you any suggestions a simple word thank you can help but a lot of time when people are giving suggestions let's say if i say that okay you made a fantastic presentation today you know a lot of people will then go into detail either they start clarifying it or they go into greater detail and they just lose the whole idea of gratitude the simplest thing is say thank you and that's all so remember this is the most easiest and the simple behavior that anybody can start practicing it with immediate effect is to use this two golden words called thank you which is an attitude of gratitude 
नंबर एटीन विच इज कॉल्ड एज पनिशिंग द मिसेंजर द मिस गाइडेड नीड टू अटैक द इनोसेंट हु आर यूजली ओनली ट्राइंग टू हेल्प आई एम श्योर एज अ लीडर यू वुड कम अक्रॉस मेनी पीपल हु आर पर्टिकुलरली जूनियर और हु आर वेल विशर्स ऑफ यू एंड दे कम एंड दे सजेस्ट यू समथिंग एंड आई हैव सीन दैट पीपल जस्ट स्टार्ट फायरिंग एट दैम एंड दैट्स वेयर यू नो यू आर एक्चुअली डी मीनिंग देयर इंटेंट because they are here to help you they are here to make you successful so giving you an example let's say a sales guy comes and tells you that boss we have miss miss the deal or the competitor has taken away the big order uh, most of the time the first reaction is that you start shouting at that person why 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 what happened why you could not retain the order what is all that is happening i see that you miss these kind of opportunities very often and that is very disturbing what you are doing is you are actually punishing the messenger rather than simply asking what went wrong what are the things that are happening that i am not aware of so that's where you know if you discourage by making such bold statements to such people you are actually uh, making them run away from, from you and that's where you lose out the trust that you have to develop with your people with your team to grow further so never punish the messenger they are here to help you they are here to suggest you for your betterment the next step is it passing the buck which means the need to blame everyone but ourselves this is something like making excuses everyone understands i let me give you a classic example where does leader use passing the buck let's say that there is a big presentation coming up your global chairman is coming and you have to give a big presentation and you know that you have not been able to meet up the numbers or the expected performance criteria now what people do that's where they start the use of passing the buck that means they start looking at someone who to blame it could be the um, the regulatory changes it could be the financial cr- uh, crisis it could be the environmental changes or it could be some individuals they can they can just say anything to anyone and they just pass the buck and let me tell you the day you do that the moment you do that everybody around you understands your credibility as a leader when you pass the buck which means you don't want to take the onus of your failure your failure to execute because you don't want to fail you don't want to recognize the effort that others are making so you just choose the most easiest and the safest option is to pass the buck this is what you need to look at it very carefully because people are watching you they are looking up to you as a leader and if you do this habit this is just spoiling your image spoiling your credibility as a leader and now the last one which is an excessive need to be me which means i me myself everything which means that it's you who has to go and talk it's about you who has done everything it's about you as a person even if you have got 100 faults you are going to justify that why i am still the best and this is okay for me to have those faults with me. if i have to really sum it up i i would simply say that these 20 unrecognizable habits and behaviors are actually deflating our journey to become more successful as a leader so if you really want to work on developing these uh, super solid behaviors first you need to start stop doing these behaviors and my best recommendation for any such course is don't go by the list by picking up seven or eight i would say start picking with one or two behaviors that you have to stop doing it's not start doing it's stop doing because invariably you are doing it but you are not realizing it so if you are a successful leader and you want to be more successful you need to pick up at least two behaviors two habits from here that you want to stop doing it from immediate effect and that is now well friends i'm sure you would have really enjoyed this marshall goldsmith 20 unrecognizable habits and you would have got a very good learning i trust about it share your comments below what have you learned share your comments below what is it that you really like about this video it will be a great feedback for me thanks a lot for listening me thanks a lot for being here and stay connected